Um, okay, so the specification I'm using is actually under here. Okay, there's my YAML file. <clears throat> okay, so I've got a few test cases that I have already set up here. It's basically all, so I'm in unit test mode, so this is all unit tests. So each test here, uh, this is where we have all of the tests listed, and you can, you know, group text, tests, sub create subgroups or, or groups, or, you know, create new tests, or derive tests from existing test, te tests. Um, so you have some options, just like WinIdea, you have some special options in each window. So for each test, you have these different components that you can set up. So the meta is where you put ID information, any kind of description or requirements. So this is where you'd put all of the different requirements for this test. Um, if you're doing requirements-based testing. Next, you have the function. So this is where we can refresh the symbol information from WinIdea. And now we can actually select a function from a drop-down list, or if you wanted to actually like start typing a function, you can find the function that way. Um, this test is for this function. Um, so it does give you a prototype of the function. So we've got a, f a function that takes a a structure parameter and returns a short. So here's where we actually pass the parameter that we want to test with. So this could be a, a raw value or some kind of structure either that exists in, in memory already or if uh, you can create it dynamically. So like just for testing purposes. So here we will go to the variable section. So I'm actually creating a new variable, just a local test variable. The, the original variable is named S1. So if I were to have used the name S1, then it would have actually used the, the variable that's, that's defined in the actual source code. Um, you can do that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but for testing purposes, you can also just give it a different name and then that variable is actually created for you and you can initialize it and you, then you don't have to mess with any of the local or the global variables. So you can do it either way. So for this test, I'm creating a, a local variable and we're gonna initialize it here. Um, persistent variables, so by default, local variables are actually um, like dynamic local variables that you're creating just for the tests are destroyed after the test. So if you need to create a variable that exists beyond this test for multiple tests, you can use a persistent variable. Um, or you could also just use the, the actual variable from the function, S1. If, if we declared S1, then S1 already exists in memory. This function would manipulate it in some way, but um, it would leave it in memory. So globals, globals and register values are left uh, un, unchanged after the test um, completes. So whatever the test did to, to modify a global variable or a, or a register, those values remain there. Um, so it's, it's, it's up to the next test. If those values need to be reinitialized or changed in some way, then the next test has to, to take care of that. Okay. So for this test, um, it's a very simple test. We're just going to be initializing the structure and passing it to the function. And then um, we're gonna be checking the return value and that's it. So the other, the other features that we have here is we can set up preconditions. So preconditions are checks that would be um, made before the test actually executes. So we had a lot of customers that were complaining of their tests failing and it turned out that the state of the target before they executed their test wasn't what they expected it to be. So we set up this uh, preconditions feature. So now you can set up, you know, conditions that are checked before your test actually executes to make sure that, you know, things are what the way you expect them to be for the, the test to, to execute properly.